The hate against laptop cinema by film lovers and filmmakers is very real. Everyone from Steve McQueen and David Lynch to Christopher Nolan and James Cameron believes that films should only be watched in theaters. That you think you've seen a film on your telephone. Get real. However, I think there is an argument in favor of watching films on laptops. In this video essay, my main points will be regarding the actual physical conditions of watching a film in the theater versus on a laptop at home. Often the main arguments invoked by those in favor of the theater are its immersiveness and the communal experience, with the general arguments being that the communal experience is the only way of participating in cinema, as well as the assumption that more immersiveness necessarily means a better experience. Now let's hold on that for a second. When looking at the idea of the communal experience, one can divide art down to two different experiential segments. The communally experienced art and the privately or intimately experienced art. What do I mean by this? I simply mean that there are certain ways of experiencing art that are done in solitude, alone, and other ways of experiencing art that are done with crowds. Watching an opera, a play or a film in a theatre is a communal experience. Reading a book, many forms of painting, even bathroom singing for that matter, on the other hand, is usually a solitary or intimate experience. Even if you do do it with people, the practice itself necessitates that the experience cannot be a crowd experience. It is hard to fit 50 people in a small bathroom, for example, if you're into that. Notice that I'm making a clear distinction between the medium of art and its experience. The same medium can be experienced in different ways, like reading poetry alone, which is solitary, versus attending a poetry recitation, which becomes a communal experience. So when someone says that the only real cinema is to experience it in a theatre, the counter is that the medium is not the same as the experience. Let us look at music, for example. If you're listening to music on your earphones in your room, it becomes a solitary experience. At a concert, it's a communal experience. But can you say that one or the other is the only real way to listen to music? It seems clear to me that the two experiences are different from each other. One makes us feel like we are part of a whole, a sense of belonging, and the other makes us feel like the music exists only for us. Let us now apply this same argument to film. On this everyone agrees that watching a film on a laptop versus watching it in the theatre is a completely different experience. The problem I have is when people start suggesting that one is better than the other or that one is the only correct way of experiencing cinema. I think cinema should be a huge, big expanse, you know, it should be 80 feet wide and you should envelop the audience in the screen. Because that's so, cinema. Yeah, that's cinema. And the sound all around you and everything. I mean, why people want to watch movies on their computers, I should never know. But you would say, if it's only about solitary or intimate versus the communal experience, would you say that watching a film in an empty theatre is better than watching it on a laptop? Now we're on to something. Let us look at some of the physical conditions that differentiate the theatre from the laptop screen. A theatre screen is obviously much bigger than a laptop screen, resulting in the image looking a lot larger than it would look on a laptop screen. However, as the audience, you are also further away from the screen than you would have been if you were watching a film on the laptop. These two factors make film theatres perfect to watch films that are larger than life or otherworldly. Avatar, for example, benefits from the larger screen as the physical size complements the magnitude of the stakes as well as the setting of the film and its heroic characters. Their blown up sizes make these epic characters appear literally larger than life. Recently, James Cameron asked his audience to watch Avatar 2 in theatres only because in the smaller screens, the characters would be hard to distinguish from each other. The audience's physical distance from the screen removes us from our own reality. And this, along with the dark theatre with surround sound, helps isolate us from our own reality and fully commit to the story of this extraordinary new world. However, what happens if the film in question isn't a film about larger-than-life characters? Perhaps a good example here would be Sound of Metal. The recent Netflix original follows a drummer who starts losing his hearing. It is a film written and created, keeping in mind that the viewers will not be watching it in theatres. In this case, the smaller screen serves not only to isolate the characters and to make them appear small and thus fragile, the distance from the screen is closer, making us physically closer to them, forcing us to look at them struggle an inch away from us. I believe this makes us relate more to them. 
with my argument this is what i am not saying i am not saying you cannot watch other types of films in theater or that smaller screens can be emotions better what i am saying is that watching the same film on the two different screens would result in vastly different experiences and comparing the two would be apples to oranges as they both bring something unique to the screen watching gully boy in the theater made me gasp in awe at the huge characters in their extreme situations watching the film again on my laptop screen i focused more on the flawed nature of the characters and their human struggle this time Of course it wasn't a stark u-turn but there was a clear difference in experience between the two that went simply beyond one is better than the other something extraordinary about saying that actor's face is 40 feet high and the 40 feet high there's something mythic about it that's beyond your everyday life is immersiveness necessarily a better experience film in theater is definitely a more immersive experience but for that very reason it is also necessarily a more exhaustive experience as the more immersive something is the more we are involved in it and the more we are mentally exhausted by it on top of that is the fact that watching films in the theater is a social activity that is to say watching a film is as much a performance as an experience one dresses up takes a bath puts on perfume to watch a film going to the movies is an outdoor activity a social activity akin to the opera perhaps However, laptop films are instead a non-social, personal, stay-at-home activity. More like reading a book sprawled across your bed. You are accorded a lot more control. That is where whatever lie down and watch, change postures, etc. You have a lot of comfort and control. Late at night, my wife sleep and I'm can't sleep and I pull up Netflix on my iPhone, put in a, some good headphones and watch a film that close to my face. Like there's something interesting about that. You can interact with things very privately now. That I think was missing. If I want to cry without people seeing, I'm gonna put on a steel magnolias <laughs> and I'm gonna cry. And if my wife wakes up, I'll just hit pause and I'll put it on the pillow. I mean, there's something interesting about that that I feel like we didn't get a chance to experience before. In theaters, if you're hot or cold, if you want to go to the loo or if you don't like your seat, there's nothing you can do. No one will wait for you. It's easier at home. Stretch your legs, change your posture, pause the film. But no, the Puritan cinephile will say. True films can only be watched in one go and in the theaters because they were created to be watched that way. To that I say fair enough. And Beethoven wrote his symphonies to be heard in a jam-packed auditorium. Will you throw away your iPod and refuse to listen to any more classical music? Of course, the argument that films were designed to be watched on larger screens holds ground. But I feel that there are valid counters to this argument. The first that there are clearly films being designed to be watched on smaller screens straight to dvd films tv films and off late ott originals are all films created with the express intent in mind that they will be watched only on smaller screens this legitimizes at least watching those films on laptops however secondly is the fact that over the last century we have been moving further and further away from artists intentions and more into the reclamation of art by consumers that is to say the art is no longer being defined by how it's created but also how it's consumed if you take a puritan stance against laptop cinema you also have to take a similar stance against ipods streaming music audiobooks and the release of the play hamilton and this democratization of art with which the consumers of art are getting a more powerful say in how the art is interpreted should also extend to its consumption that everyone will have access to both the means of production and watching anything that's ever existed instantly therefore the consumer's consumption should be considered an art by itself or at the very least a medium again i reiterate i am not saying laptops are better than theater for watching films neither am i saying that theaters are better what i am suggesting is that both media have their own strengths and their own completely different experiences In my opinion then theatrical cinema is for the audience laptop cinema is for the viewer